banking has been accelerating towards digital in recent years, but the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic pushed forward the need for these services. With this, we have seen digital payment methods such as central bank digital currencies come to the fore. However, the speed of these changes have left some feeling concerned about their exposure to risk. In the first chapter of this series, Falk Reicher, Global Vice President and Global IBU Head of Banking at SAP, explains how banks are taking the next steps in digital progress while also minimizing risk. Banking has been moving towards digitization for some time, but the pandemic seems to have stepped this up a gear. What notable innovations have we seen emerge in banking in recent times? Cloud is a real game changer in adopting innovation. So it accelerates innovation in financial services. Uh, at this point in time, it's not a question anymore if banks move their operations to the cloud. The only question is when. We see differences in adoption in regard to geography, uh, mainly due to regulations. Uh, take the US, for example, they are a clear front runner. Take China, take Russia, uh, they are a bit more hesitant. And the available infrastructure, when you think about uh, parts of the world like Latin America or Africa, where the infrastructure is not at the same level like in the more mature countries. And we see also differences in adoption in regard to um, in regard to the size of the organization. We have large corporations that uh, are in the process of making the move uh, to the cloud and they take it piece by piece. Yeah? That could be a certain system, that could be a line of business, uh, that could be you know, any end-to-end -end process which they feel they can handle with a considerable handleable risk. Uh, whereas you look at small and medium enterprises or even startups, uh, they do it all at once. Uh, startups start right away in the cloud. There is no need to have these things on site anymore. You do it right away in the cloud. So, but uh, the key question is how banks move to the cloud. So let me elaborate on that a bit, a bit because it is essential to gain the expected business benefits that go beyond pure cost savings. We see quite a number of institutions just doing a lift and shift and afterwards struggling with their business case, <laughs> surprisingly. Yeah. From our perspective, you have to combine the infrastructure change with a business transformation. You should analyze your business processes and benchmark it against industry best practices. You should analyze your business processes and embed new technology like robotic process automations or any type of AI to streamline your processes. This is how the move to the cloud makes a real difference, both to your bottom and your top line. Uh, finally, you specifically asked me about notable innovations. Uh, I'd like to highlight the open banking reform as it lays the foundation for innovation in financial services. Without the open banking standards, let's be very clear, we would have never seen the amount of innovation and investment in financial service over the past, over the past years. Open banking has brought innovation to literally every part of banking. For instance, consumer financing, payments, asset management, and the list goes on and on. There has been an increased development of digital payment methods, including digital assets and central bank digital currencies. How are these operating alongside traditional fiat currencies? Now, payments is obviously a hotbed of innovation these days. It is uh, specifically interesting to see how companies like PayPal and Klarna and others have improved the consumer experience around payments. Now, I, I remember the times 10 years ago where payments were probably the most boring piece in banking at all. That's not the case anymore. Payments are getting uh, getting exciting and uh, getting flexible and, uh, you know, getting digital. And with all that, uh, you have a totally new cons uh, consumer experience. We are seeing an increasing number of payment alternatives, of course, for quite a while. On the other side, uh, fiat currency like the US dollar and the euro lack attractiveness. And this is exactly the environment that creates the demand for digital assets. So far, we have seen no major issues having digital assets operating alongside traditional fiat currencies. And quite frankly, we had alternative payment vehicles like commodity money 
uh, in the past as well. So that's not necessarily something totally new. There are pros and cons for both fiat currencies uh, and cryptocurrencies. Fiat currencies, for instance, are widely used. They're relatively stable and they are backed by the government, but they have the risk of inflation. Now, cryptocurrencies on the other side are protected to inflation. They are easy and fast transactional process, but transactions cannot be canceled. And if you lose your private key, you cannot get a replacement. So there are pros and cons for both sides. Uh, uh, when it comes to a CDBC, it is very likely what we have now seen in a couple of countries already that the central bank digital currency will replace traditional fiat currencies over time for sure digital payments will continue to exist in some form and as long as the government doesn't interfere it's up to each one of us to make a choice and kimberly that's a good thing at the end of the day and the evolution of so many forms of digital technology have left some feeling nervous about the level of risk. What is being done to manage the risk factors? Now, let me state first that with new technologies, you get new benefits, but also normally new risks. So this is nothing that, you know, is overly concerning, uh, I would say. However, it has to be taken serious. Cybersecurity is definitely a priority and must underpin digital technology. The good news is that every single financial institution I am aware of has made the risk going along with the digital technology a top priority. And this goes along with huge investments to protect, for example, from endpoint threats, cloud security risk, multi-stage attacks, or simply a shortage of uh, skill in-house. Now, to that point, it should also be mentioned that there is a huge number of specialized providers in the meanwhile to address cybersecurity. And they complement the efforts of the financial institutions with their services. Now, when it comes to financial service and payments in specific, data security and fraud protections are the key topics to be taken care of. Companies will need to be conscious of the numerous operational cybersecurity and data protection compliance requirements that have been put in place to protect all the different phases and layers of the digital payment process. Such laws include the European Union's GDPR and the updated Payment Service Directive, shortly named uh, PSD2, that provide guidance about the requirements needed to stay on the right side of the law and to avoid compromising users' data. However, let me be clear here, uh, laws will not be enough to avoid cybersecurity threats. Key from my perspective will be technology solutions for real-time fraud prevention and intelligent mitigation strategies.